Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks and Twin Motion tutorial. Now over the Christmas period I've become a little bit fascinated with geodesic domes and I wanted to make a quick video just to show you how to do a really nice sort of set of renderings of a geodesic dome model I found on SketchUp uh, warehouse into Twin Motion. So here you can see is the model, it's a really nice little model and I'll put the link in the description and give credit to the author. But all we're going to do is go ahead and basically export this as a Cinema 4D file to begin with. So we'll go export, Cinema 4D and basically all the options here I'm just going to leave as they are apart from planar objects. Now planar objects are like two dimensional objects so we'll leave those for now. Um, let's click OK and export. And let's go off and save this to the correct folder. So I'm going to go through to this project here. I've got my domes folder and I've got a twin motion folder in here. Let's just go ahead and save and we'll go ahead and export and save that model. Okay, so let's switch across to twin motion. So the very first step, as always, is go to import and we'll click import and open the file. Let's just locate the file that we've just exported. And there it is. You'll notice that there's also a little text folder with any textures in, but it doesn't appear to be a lot in there at the moment. Let's go for it. It's a pretty small file, so let's click OK. And you will notice that Twinmotion can import a really wide range of file types. So no matter what CAD software you're actually using, you should be able to get your information in there, including the new Datasmith format as well. So we'll perhaps talk about that later, but it will take native SketchUp as well, and that all works really nicely. Let's go ahead and click open. Now one really important thing to do is go to the options and make sure that you do not collapse by material as that will basically take all the materials from Vectorworks or SketchUp and put them into one object. What we really want to do is keep the hierarchy here. And that everything else is fine. Let's click OK. And it will take a few seconds to read in. <clears throat> if there's any textures missing it will probably give you a report but I don't think it will matter too much. So we'll go ahead. Uh, if we want to locate those we can. Let's just go ahead and click OK. OK, that's good. So the model has come in. Um, the first thing to do is probably go over to the Scenograph, click onto the model there and just click the key F on the keyboard, just so you can kind of actually fit to the location. You can see it's actually looking pretty good already. So here's our first stage of importing the model so far. So let's move on to the second phase. Okay, so here's our model. It's looking pretty good um, and basically you can see it's all coming quite nicely. Even the, the people there have come in. Of course, they don't face and rotate uh, the camera at the moment, so we'll sort that out in a moment. So basically, the first thing I think we can do is just start to apply a few simple materials in twin motion. Um, we've done this before, but uh, let's just recap. So basically, let's go through to nature. Let's get some grass and we can drag and drop some much nicer grass onto that model. You can see here's the SketchUp grass, here's the twin motion grass. Um, once you've actually got it on there's no reason why you shouldn't just keep sort of moving that around the model and basically dragging that around. Let's kind of get back a bit higher up I think. So let's go back to the model, click F and then that's going to be easiest to spin around. So if you hold shift down and click the middle button on the mouse you'll be able to orbit the model so you can see that's been nice and easy to apply those. Next thing up, um, let's go for some man-made materials. I think go for some asphalt on here. So a couple of different types of asphalt. Um, I think maybe we'll go for some sort of cobblestones or something a little bit more interesting on this area here. So basically that's really nice and easy just to kind of reapply some of those kind of SketchUp um, models that come in, or textures rather. Now if you do want to keep this SketchUp texture, what I recommend is you click the T key, sample the material, so this is the native uh, texture that came in from SketchUp, and it is a bit light, so basically what you can do there is click onto colour, get the colour picker, and just sort of slide down the darkness slightly, just to kind of introduce a little bit more depth to it as well, that's cool. Okay, good, so that's nice. Now I think another thing that we need to sort out is these um, people and things, but we'll come back to that in a moment. So that's pretty straightforward to do. And I think they're all going to be, looks like they're all going to be sort of classed up fairly easily for us to kind of find. So we can turn them on and off as we need to. So a little trick that we will use a bit later um, for all of these, let's just do one now, is right click and replace. So replace. Then we're going to go back to our library and we're going to drill down to characters 
Um, and let's go for an animated human. Uh, let's choose Michael. And basically, all we need to do is click Start Replace. So basically, Michael replaces the previous uh, character. So this makes it nice and easy. And then we can kind of simply rotate this around if needed or move him around. Basically, we can actually um, manipulate all of these characters quite straightforwardly. So actually, while we're here, let's just go and do this. Um, it looks to me like all of the people are, let's just see. Yeah, they've all got different names. So that is slightly tricky. I think that's probably, let's just see if they're all in a bit of a group here. Yeah. Okay, so if they were all named properly, it would be quite easy. I think that's going to get most of them by the looks of things. So let's just select all of these models. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty much everybody. Let's right click and replace again. Now, the difference is time. We clearly don't want one person. So what I'm actually going to do is drag down a whole bunch of different people. Okay, from the browser. Let's get some chaps in there too. Balance it up a bit. Um, and you can see it's really easy to drag down a whole bunch of different types of people and characters in different sort of um, positions. <laughs> I'm not sure about these people sunbathing. Let's leave those out of it for a moment. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so we've got a nice kind of range of people there. Let's get some more casual people in there. And when we're ready, we click Start Replace. Now you can see how rapidly that brings the scene to life with moving people. That is actually pretty cool. And they're all kind of interacting and so on as well. So we've got this final group here. Um, three Bryce's. Let's right click. Let's replace. Again, let's just drag down a few different characters and start replace. Very, very nice and straightforward. Now one thing I can see is they all seem to be facing um, the same way. So you might want to kind of do a bit of work on actually making them um, talk to each other and so on. One thing that you can do with Twinmotion that's really, really cool is actually just change the pose. So if you just want to change like what she's wearing to make him match, you can do that, different colours and so on. Uh, you can also have them sort of chatting, idling, sitting even if, you know, even dancing perhaps. <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. Let's go for speaking. And even within speaking, you see there's a range of different animations. Um, so very, very easy to do. So what I would suggest is you kind of just make your scene look a bit more natural. Try and get the people to sort of interact a bit more. Um, really, that was that was the SketchUp model where they were all kind of facing one way by the seams of things. So, you know, it's going to take a few minutes to kind of do that. So we'll kind of come back to that a bit later and just going to get this looking a bit more natural. One thing you can do, though, let's say I would like this lady sat on the grass. If you drag um, and drag, you'll notice that she sinks into the grass. But if you actually drag on the point where the yellow widget is, this little bit, bit here, she will actually stick to the surface. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, and what we can do is we could say, let's have her sitting. And maybe, I'll tell you what, actually, let's try lying down. Yeah, it looks pretty natural. So there she is. And let's just take this dude here. Looks a bit smart. Let's go for someone a bit more casual. Let's take him over there. Kind of rotate him around a bit. And let's go for him lying down as well. He's very casual, very laid back. But you get the idea. It's quite nice how you can kind of get them to actually face onto the model. Let's snap him down a bit below. Okay, so that's very easy to do. Okay, so I think next up, after the people, um, let's have a look at these, these flagpoles. So I don't really like the look of these. Um, at the moment, they're basically just really kind of straightforward flags. So if we do go back to the Twin Motion Library, we go to Objects, we go to City. In here, you will see some actual flags. So what we can do, okay, let's just take this one and turn this one off for a second. In fact, let's just have a go with replacing and see if this works. So replace. And let's just drag down. Yeah, okay, I think we'll just drag down maybe this one to begin with. Let's go for Start Replacement. Wow, that's worked really, really nicely, actually. So I think what we'll do is, let's see if we can kind of get all the other flags here. Looks to me like there's lots of groups of them. So right click, replace, drag that down again, start replace. And what's lovely about the flags, can you notice they're all sort of dragging in the wind, uh, blowing in the wind rather, and um, you know, that's something that you can actually set, the wind speed um, and the wind direction. So look, you can make it really windy, or not too windy at all. Pretty cool. 
You can also change the direction if you would like to. So that's quite nice. It's having going that way. And one thing that is really, really nice here, if you click T and click onto the flag itself, um, you can actually go, let's just get a single flag selected. You can actually go to the texture, click open. And, you know, believe it or not, every country in the world, there's one of the country's flags here. Um, some really interesting ones, a great way to learn about the different countries. So who should we choose? Let's go for this one. And you can see it's really nice and easy to do. So you just click open, change the flags. Let's go for Arkansas. Um, so yeah, brilliant. You've got all the different countries, but you've also looks like by the look of things, you've actually got the different states in America as well. Let's go for Antarctica. So we can make this a nice international affair. Okay, so the model's looking pretty good. We've sorted all the flags out now. You can see they're all blowing nicely in the wind and we've got lots of different countries represented. Let's carry on doing a bit more work. Now, the next thing I'm going to work on is things like the glass. I'm going to go to my materials and the first material I'm going to try is just the clear glass and see how that looks. And that actually looks pretty good already. So I might well go with that. But do note there's um, things like mirrored glass. And the beauty with mirrored glass is you can kind of really tone the reflectivity up or down. Um, and so on but that is always reflective so if it's not reflective it's kind of fairly solid um, let's go for refractive glass that's quite nice you can see that you can adjust the refraction as well but I like the clear glass I think that was the best one so far so I'm going to just drag that onto the model there that already looks like a nice improvement next I think I need to work on this roof structure here and what I really want to do here is try out some of the metal um, kind of textures if you like so let's try something quite shiny let's try some chrome it actually does look really nice but i'm quite keen to try out a few others as well let's go for some hammered copper oh that looks really really nice with the different sort of dimples and things let's have a look see what else we've got some gold foil galvanized steel that looks pretty cool slightly worn so you can see you get quite a nice different effect black carbon that looks cool but you can see the joint lines um let's just try that one out that looks actually pretty nice the aluminium so i think i think that's the one i'm going to go for for now we can always come back and change that a bit later okay brilliant so what i'm going to do here is just have a look at replacing the stone let's kind of get down there so i'm just adjusting the speed slightly just to get down a little bit more and let's have a little look at this see how this looks so we'll go for some stone you can see We've got some nice choices of stones there, something a bit more grey. And I think what I'm going to do is just kind of lighten that up a little bit there. That looks pretty cool. Good. I'm not keen on the uh, red here. I think that looks a bit vibrant. So I'm going to go for some chrome, maybe slightly worn chrome, maybe matte even. The good thing is with Twin Motion, you can just try these things out until it looks right and see how it feels. Okay, that's pretty cool. So um, now we're going to look at really kind of improving the environment a bit. So I'm just going to click onto this thing here, this surface, and just make it a little bit more reflective. And this one here. Okay, that's looking good so far. So what I'm going to do now then, guys, is just select these four elements here. Um, and these look like lights. So the idea of these is I think that we can select those and we can actually replace them with some kind of light. What I might actually do is apply some kind of glow texture to them. And just see how that actually works. So I might pop down to my neons, just drag on some kind of neon. And it may be that when I go to the night view, let's change the time of day, that those actually start to kind of look quite cool. So I'm going to leave those as they are for now. Okay, that's good. You can see we're at nighttime view now. Um, let's do a bit of work on the background and the context. So for this, I'm going to go over to the dock and I'm going to go to begin with to location. First thing I'm going to do is actually change the location a bit by sliding through the time of day just to get some sort of nice looking shadow. So I really do like the idea of doing a bit of a night shot here. I'm going to go to the background and you can see we've got some sort of standard backgrounds, anything from none to like a city background or kind of like a almost like a watery background. I don't mind the city, so I think that's kind of nice. Let's go for something a bit more European city, perhaps. Okay, yeah. so we're going to go to the context tab. We're going to click onto the urban dock. 
And what's nice about this is it brings up OpenStreetMap so that you can see we're um, currently in Paris at the moment. Um, but the good thing is you can basically click and type in any city in the world. And basically with OpenStreetMap, there's quite a good le level of sort of context that you can actually find. Um, so we can kind of give this a nice bit of context. I'm looking for a nice bit of open area where I might be able to place this little stadium. Um, let's actually go for, let's see if we can zoom out a bit and find something a little bit more open. Okay, yeah, okay, let's pretend that this is going to go near St. James's Park. So what I do is I click grab, then I can zoom out a little bit more, and I'm just going to kind of frame up this level of context here. Just move that around into that section, and when I'm ready, I click grab. It will take a few minutes, but what will happen is a download from OpenStreetMap some basically context, some city context, which isn't like super detail or anything, but it's really useful um, in terms of just locating your model into a nice environment. So depending on the size that you picked, how big this context area is, um, sometimes it will take a few minutes to download. But let's have a look at this when it loads in. Okay, give it a few more seconds. Here we go, we're downloading now. Should be nearly there. Brilliant. Okay, so you can see that I think this top context I don't need. This is the context I'm actually looking for. And basically what I'll do, just to avoid that flashing, I'll take the context there and just move it down ever so slightly. And if I do want to, I can click on statistics and go to my transform menu. And I can actually sort of type in a number here. Let's do minus uh, 0 0.1. Okay, maybe a bit more, 0.2. Yeah, okay, so basically let's go 0.21. Just to drop it down below that surface so that we don't get any Z fighting. Now, you notice that we've chosen quite a nice area of context. So let's kind of get up above um, and have a little look at this in its context a bit. Okay, that's looking cool. Now, what I can do is take my entire model that I imported um, from Vectorworks via Sketcher, remember, and actually select it and move it across. Okay, so that's pretty nice in that I can move it to a good location and I can even rotate it round so it's on a nice orientation that I'm looking for. Um, and then basically I can kind of do a bit of editing on the context so I can take things like the trees and I can simply move those out into position that I might want to to look at them. So that's looking really cool. Okay, um, another little trick here is, by the way, if you click onto the buildings, you'll notice that you can simply adjust the height. Um, you can even, you know, import your own. You can even do things like duplicate them as well. So it depends what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to kind of create a bit more context in the background, then that'll work pretty well for you. Excellent. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've just got a nice little bit of context for the project now. I think what I'll do now is just um, save and let's just adjust the time of day a little bit so we can kind of get a bit more sunshine coming in. Fantastic. Okay, good. So I'm um, really happy with the context now. It's looking good. So let's now do a bit more work on some of the things like the street props and furniture. So to do this, we simply go to the objects menu. I'm going to go to city and in here you're going to find all sorts of really cool things like uh, benches and things like that. So let's try some of these. So I basically can just drag and drop some of these items into the model. And once they're dragged, it's very easy to just click and rotate them around. So I think that'd be quite nice just to give some people some places to sit. And uh, remember what I said earlier about the people, how you compose them. You can actually just click on them, go to sitting. So we can now drag him. So he's kind of sitting quite naturally. Let's do the same with her spin around having a little conversation there just makes it look a lot more natural i think when you kind of put the people into situations where they're actually kind of interacting with the model so let's do that let's have her there move her across let's have her sitting down as well just rotate around a bit so you can see it looks pretty natural quite fast excellent just move her out a tiny bit i could see her feet were missing Okay, so there's things like the benches, and there's a really nice uh, variety of those, so you can have a little play around with those as well. I think what we'll do, we'll just whiz up a little bit higher, um, and let's kind of just add a few more of that particular type. Click. You'll see what's nice is every time you click and place one, it actually rotates it for you. So not particularly doing this accurately. Just kind of roughly where I want them. 
but each one is slightly randomly rotated as well. I think that looks good. Okie dokie. So, let's have a look at what else we've got. We've got some nice things like planters. Okay, and these can really going to go quite a long way in terms of enhancing things like the landscape as well. So I think we'll put a couple of these in to the model. Let's have a couple here. And as we're doing this little section, let's put a couple over here as well. Um, you can see there's even things like the trees, which are really nice. And these are actually kind of located in, should we say, uh, tree planters. Okay, so that's easy. I can either easily just move around the model, place a few of these. Not doing this particularly accurately, just sort of showing you really for speed of use how this works. Uh, let's get up a bit higher. Probably would have been good if I'd done it in plan, then I could have actually spaced these out quite nicely. But it's looking pretty good. I'm getting those fairly regularly. I could do this a bit more accurately, probably by doing it in my modelling software and actually replacing them. I'm very happy with that. So, do explore the libraries of things like planters. Um, and little things like the details, things like fountains as well. So, these are really nice just for kind of adding that life and that detail. Whoops. So, kind of just click in there by clicking, clicking F. Okay. So, what else should we add? Let's add um, a couple of drinking fountains. And... You know what I don't think I'll do is I think I'll actually move that plant to there. Over to there a bit. Just because I quite like that view there. That particular view. Excellent. Good, good. Okay, so let's save what we've done. We've done a bit more life into the model immediately. Um, I would like to work on this grassy area now. So to do this, what I'm going to do is basically select it with um, my selection tool, 4. And you can see the whole thing is selected here. Okay, great. So we've done a little bit more work on the content. It's starting to look quite interesting. Now I want to add a bit more of the finer detail. So to do this, I'm going to go to uh, my context and I'm going to try two tools here. Firstly, I'm going to go to vegetation scatter. And basically what I'm going to do is go over to this grass area here, choose some grass here, select it, and basically click on this plus sign. And every time I click, you'll see that it will basically place on that particular material some grass so it's really nice in terms of it sort of adding that little bit of scatter there and one thing that you can do quite easily if you do need to is remove a bit but at the same time if you do want to you can actually drag in an alternative one and then add in a little bit of that into the mix as well um, now I'm not sure I really want that so let's just click on remove some of that as well but you can see how that works. So just an example, if I wanted some more clovers, that looks quite pretty. A bit more natural. Let's do it. Okay, good. So that's looking much nicer already. Now, that works pretty well on small areas, but for very large areas like the entire park, um, I actually think you're better off using a different technique. And basically that would involve using the vegetation paint tool. Now, it's a similar process. Go to your library of materials. Select the thing that you would like to paint. Let's go for grass here. And let's have a, a little bit of a mixture here. And let's select them both. Click on the brush. Okay, then you can adjust the brush size, but let's just keep this as a default for now. And basically just start to paint really on the model. Okay, and just be a bit careful where you go. But let's kind of just get a good coverage around here. Oh, it's looking good. And you'll see that when I go down to eye level, look at that, absolutely lovely in terms of sort of uh, quite heavy on the uh, flora and fauna. So let's go for clovers and let's take the re reduce them down a bit. You can see I can reduce them down. Let's take the grass, let's slide the reduction out. That looks a lot nicer very, very rapidly. And the good thing is um, you can basically, when you sort of get to a bit where you need to maybe carry on working, Let's say we, we didn't do enough over here. All you actually need to do is click onto the painted object and then start working again. So you don't have to actually kind of uh, create a brand new object is what I'm saying. You can basically just keep going. So there's not a lot of point in basically painting it right around the model unless we're going to animate right around there. And you will notice it does fade into the distance as well. Okay, that's cool. So let's get back to where we were. So that's the uh, vegetation paint tool and the object scattering tool, vegetation scatter. 
But what I might want to do here is basically remove a bit. So I click on here, let's get my brush size down, let's make that say five meters. And I want to kind of create like a, a little desire line here. So I basically can just delete that. You can see very straightforwardly. Let's go up again. Let's do a similar one over here. Just delete that little path there. And one more there. So it's really quite easy to manage. As I say, what is particularly lovely is if you decide you would like a, a little bit more in there, like some white flowers, you just drag those in, click, and then you can tone the density of those down. So it really is a very nice way to rapidly create some vegetation. Let's get a bit more color in there. Um, click on the poppies. Let's just have a very little tiny little smattering of poppies there. Oh, I absolutely love that. So I think this is a lovely, lovely tool um, for getting a really nice level of vegetation quite rapidly. Okay, good. Let's save what we've done. Keep saving as you go. Um, and let's begin to think about sort of setting up some actual views. So what we might actually want to do is kind of frame up a nice view here. And basically, before I do anything, I'm going to basically just tune up the weather. I'm never a fan of perfect blue skies, um, especially from the UK. So we normally have a bit of cloud in the sky. Obviously, we can make it quite rainy if we want to, as it is today. Um, I can go through to more of an overcast look and so on. So let's go for something a bit more cloudy. OK, the next thing I'm going to do is just tune the lighting a bit. So we've got the time of day, which is nice. So you can see as we change the time of day, we get the sort of different colours and I can see some shadows from uh, adjacent buildings coming in now. I see quite a nice little kind of time of day potentially. But you can also go to um, the context tab and go to locations as well as time of day. You can adjust that here, here as well. What is really nice about this bit is you can actually adjust the month as well. So you can get different sort of shadow lengths depending on what month you're in. So I recommend you do it that way. And finally, you can adjust the north offset. Um, so if you're really just trying to get a nice looking visual with different shadows, you know, you can kind of do that. That looks quite nice with the sun sort of behind in some ways. And that also looks pretty nice there. OK, that's really cool. So with that in mind, what I think I might do is try and capture a little time lapse. OK, so if you want to capture a time lapse, what we can do, let's hide these palettes here, is go to our image, um, sorry, media tab. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually just create a still image. So let's just sort of frame this up a bit more. That's really cool. OK, so I'm going to go to create image. Once you've created an image, you can click on more, go to format and then choose the output size. And um, so I quite fancy for this one something a bit custom. So I'm going to go for like a 4000 by 2000 aspect ratio, something a bit unusual, like a, a nice long thin type image. So that looks really nice. Um, what we can do is basically return to the image. If you want to do a bit of tweaking, get the eye level down a bit more. That looks rather good. Let's go to plus. But the really lovely thing is I can easily click duplicate the image and then on the second one I can simply go to location and then adjust that time of day for something a little bit different maybe. And if we did do a night shot that would look rather nice. And I think up here, if I look for my lights, I've got some lights which are currently turned off, but I can turn those on for the night shot. And what might be nice then is to add in some other lights. Okay, and I think if we go to Object City, ah, street lights, there we go. So this is what I was looking for. So I think what we need to do is get up a bit more. Let's kind of drag those into the model. And let's just have a few of those copied down there. Now they're pretty big. That's okay. I'm pretty happy with those. Uh, in fact, what I might do is actually select them, click six, and just scale those down a bit. Let's see if I can do that on all of them at the same time. Scale them all down a bit. And then let's click four, hold shift down, move them all across. And then let's rotate them 180 degrees just so they face the other other way. 
So you can see the lighting is quite nice. Um, let's go back to our night shot now. Let's just sort of frame that up a bit more. I think that's looking really cool. Again, turn those lights on. Let's update. So I've got a daytime image. Um, maybe I want a different location for that. It's going to go around here a bit more. Look at that kind of view. The beauty is, if that tree's annoying me, I can essentially hide it, go back to my image, and update just to save that particular image without that tree. Very, very straightforward. And any other changes, like things like the time of day, I make through the image itself. So I'm really happy with that. Um, so I've got a couple of nice images, daytime, got my night shot there. Again, what I'm going to do here is just, just kind of get up into this a bit more. And I'm going to put some more bollards over here. They are actually huge. So I'm going to take these ones. And I'm going to copy a few of those around. And just rotate those around as well. Just to get some nice lighting in that front area. What I might also do is just actually add in some normal lights as well. So let's kind of zoom into this area here. Go to my uh, lighting. Let's go all the way back to lighting. And I'm just going to drag in some nice sort of IES type spotlights. Um, let's turn that down a bit in terms of the angle. And maybe the intensity is a little bit bright there. Good. Once I've got that one sorted, I can just drag that across to the other side. And maybe have a few of those just along the front here as well. You can see that it's very easy to do in terms of sort of grabbing the uh, the widget, as it were, to do that. Excellent. So looking quite good. Um, I think probably still need a bit more work on the lighting. So I'm going to go for an omnidirectional light and raise that up a bit here. Going to get a really nice big radius. Put some shadows on, and I'm going to go get a little bit more intensity there good okay so that's looking quite nice I think and I think maybe what I'll do is just copy that light around to there and another one over there that section there starts to make a quite a bit of difference really okay let's do one more here and one more over there Of course, what would be quite nice is to actually have one inside the model as well. If I can actually get inside, which I think we are. Let's get that radius looking quite nice. And of course, maybe one outside. Just to get a little bit of general illumination around the whole model. Okay, let's review. So we've got our daytime image. We've got our nighttime image. Just let that work up a bit. Um, okay, that's looking really nice, I think. I'd like to see a bit more stars. So I go to lighting. I'm gonna get the exposure up a tiny bit here, just to get a little bit more background. And also go to settings and go to star intensity. You can just about see, if I get the moon intensity up a bit, and the ambient intensity, it's looking really, really nice. So let's save what we've done again. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and set up just one or two more images. Uh, for this next one, I'm just going to kind of get right up there. I do like the night shot, so what I'm going to do is swing around to this angle over here. And let's kind of centre this up, this whole model. It's quite fun. And we'll get on some animation in, in a minute. So that's looking good. So let's create an image there. And I think for this one, I'm going to go for a different format. I'm going to go for um, Ultra HD. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to try custom. See what happens if I do 3000 by 3000. Nice sort of square shaped image. Whoops. 3 thousand okay it's looking really really good i like the look of that so let's go back and let's click update to recapture 
So, I hope you like some of those images. As I say, nothing to stop you from just doing a fine bit of tweaking as you go. Um, one thing I'm just going to try here is camera, um, as well as the vignetting. I'm going to remove a bit of that. I'm going to go to parallelism. And what that does, it basically makes the image, all the verticals, completely vertical. And I'm going to try the depth of field. Okay, that's not bad, but I will need to go and set the distance of that depth of field so it's a bit more in the distance. Um, just to blur out the background there. I like the look of that. That's looking good. Okay, good. So I may decide I want to go to uh, visual effects um, and under color gradient. You'll notice that sometimes just tweaking the saturation down a tiny bit can help. Um, they look a bit too vivid sometimes. So that's pretty nice. So let's rewind. So there's that one. There's the night shot. Takes a second to come through. Uh, it's lovely. You see all the stars beginning to come out and so on. And there's that nice sort of uh, perspective shot there. Let's just kind of hold shift down. Let's just orbit that around a tiny bit more. Yeah, and let's just update. Good. I'm really happy with that then. So what I'm going to do now is go to create some images. Um, not images, sorry, some animations. So we're going to go back to media. We can go to video. And all we need to do is create our first clip is create video. That creates a keyframe. So right away, I'm just going to pop into the camera and actually set um, the field of view to be a little bit less wide. So turn the depth of field on is fine and turn the parallelism off. OK, good. So let's go back to our video. And all I'm going to do now is basically use my WASDA keys to move along and around a bit. I'm going to click plus. I'm going to go around a bit more. And I'm going to click plus. So now I've got these three keyframes. I can rewind and just play through those and see how, it, how that looks. So it looks pretty nice. We get to the sort of central point. Um, that tree is a bit annoying. So I'm going to select that tree. I think I'm just going to delete it. It's probably the easiest thing to do. And let's just rewind and play again. So you can see without the tree there, we're not going to crash into that particular tree. I don't think it will matter for the visual. Um, that looks nice. Okay. So one other thing that is really nice to do is time of day animation. So to do that, we click onto our first keyframe, go to location, and just choose a sort of different time of day. Um, so let's go for something sort of nice and early in the morning. And let's basically go back and update. Let's click on the second keyframe, click on more, let's go to location, let's go for a little bit later in the day, something like that. Try and get it fairly even so that the time matches. So it was 8 to 11, that's uh, three hours. So let's click on to rewind, let's update. Let's click on to this one, go to more, let's take the time on another three hours. So let's get through to about two in the afternoon, something like that. And you know what? Why don't we just do one final one? So let's actually move forward a bit now. And let's click a plus keyframe. And then let's go and take it right through to almost a sort of evening time. See how that looks. Okay, you, the good thing is though, you can try these things out. Now, I'm going to need more time. So to do that, I just simply add more time into the animation, say 30 seconds. Let's rewind. Let's play the preview. The beauty with Twin Motion is, I mean, the preview itself is pretty nice. It's pretty high quality. Um, you get a really nice kind of level of rendering. Um, and this is preview. When it's rendered out, you know, full quality, it'll be even better than this. So you can see that nice sunshine moving around. Get to the middle of the day. And it's all pretty easy to set up. Now, if you spot something weird, like a spot of that floating building, you can just delete it. And then you can literally just play and carry on. So, you know, you could do things like um, maybe, you know, you want to add a bit more detail. So you can add some, some butterflies to this section. And then, as I say, you can just kind of carry on playing. So that's the beauty of Twin Motion. It's very fluid in terms of working. As soon as you spot something you would like to change, you can go ahead and do it. 
So what I'll do is I'll have one more keyframe and on this one I'll literally just go to time of day to kind of make it even darker but I will also go and get a bit of ambient light brought in. A little bit more exposure. And let's just play those final couple of frames. So you can just see it getting slightly lighter as it rolls through the animation. Very good. In fact, what I may as well do is just move forward a bit and update. So let's just rewind from here. Just play that last little section. That's kind of nice. Pauses for a bit. And it gets to the end there and then lightens up. Okay, good. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. That's my first clip. Let's do one more clip and then we're done. So I'm going to kind of get up right up high for this. And what I'm going to do is actually kind of zoom into the building here a bit. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, let's go back to video. Create video. Let's move down a bit. get quite close down to eye level. Let's click M to get to eye level and we'll click plus. Let's add a bit more time, 30 seconds. And let's just rewind that. You can see how easy that is to set up. Very, very nice. Very smooth once you get the time in there. I like the way these flags are glowing. Um, maybe you could rotate the wind direction a little bit, might help. Um, but that's all looking good. I'm going to just adjust that round. And let's just update that second image. So there's our second image. Let's go down to eye level. And let's move across here. Let's do one more image. Okay, so we're just going to play through that one more time. You can see it plays through. We're going to get down to that particular point. Then we're going to drop down to the eye level view. I like the look of this. It's looking really nice and smooth. So what do you think, guys? I think this is quite fun to do. It's quite fast. Um, got a little bit of a backdrop there with the city. And maybe a little bit over bright. But the, the thing is, you can keep refining these things with no problem at all. Excellent. So that brings this part of this tutorial to an end. Um, I'll play it with the final rendered footage for you. But I hope you've enjoyed that. And um, we'll maybe look at adding sort of people moving and cars moving in the next one. Uh, but thanks for joining us, and I really appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.